So you should be a little bit numb, but if you feel it, you might feel a little bit of a prick, okay? Okay. So here we go. Welcome to the lab, everyone. Today, I'm gonna to show you an abscess I drained on a patient behind the ear. Now, some of you can't get enough of this type of thing, and you're probably the ones that are always trying to pop other people's zits. For those that are kind of iffy about it, you're probably in that category where you're like, I should probably look away, but I just can't. Don't worry, we're here for you too, to provide that much needed tension in your life to view this drainage of an abscess. We're also gonna look at the cadaver skin to talk about what an abscess is and how and why they formed. So let's do this. So first, what is an abscess? An abscess is a localized collection of pus. Now this could potentially happen anywhere in the human body, in the body cavities, around organs, even in the brain. But we're gonna focus on abscesses that affect this organ that we call the skin. And if it's in the skin, that means it's easily accessible or easier for us to drain and get rid of all that pus. So how do these pockets of pus, or in other words, abscesses form? Well, the story typically starts with bacteria. Now bacteria, or at least the different species of bacteria, there's multiple types that can actually cause or contribute to the formation of abscesses. However, the most common cause is Staphylococcus aureus, which a lot of people will refer to as simply Staph. Now keep in mind, Staph can cause more infections than just an abscess, but we're gonna focus on its contribution to abscesses in this video. Now this bacteria, or in this example, staph, finds a breach or a break in our body's castle wall. And our body's castle wall is this structure here called the epidermis. Now let me orient you to this dissection here. This is skin or a graft from uh, mid back of a cadaver here. And you can see epidermis down here is the second layer called the dermis or the dermal tissue. And the edge tells you a bit here, the majority of that cut edge is actually the dermis or dermal tissue kind of that paper thin top there is the epidermis, which is pretty amazing because if you look at it under the microscope, the epidermis is made up of multiple cells, multiple cell layers called keratinocytes. Think of each little cell or keratinocyte as a brick in the castle wall contributing to your barrier. And if you get a break in that castle wall or cut through some of those cells from either an abrasion, cracking from dryness, or any other way that that breaks down, the bacteria can then sneak in through there and then get down to the dermal tissue. Now, luckily, if we have a breach in the castle wall, we have a backup plan. Those damaged cells and the cells in the area will release chemical mediators to attract troops to the site of invasion or infection. I think invasion's cooler because a battle's about to ensue, but those troops that get attracted to the site are white blood cells, which fight off infections and invaders. And there's a specific type of white blood cell that gets involved with fighting staph and involved in abscesses, and it's called polymorphonuclear huh, leukocytes. And polymorphonuclear refers to this nucleus that kind of looks like it changes shape and it has different shapes underneath the microscope. Leukocyte, leuk means white, site means cell, so you can kind of see the name there. But a lot of people just refer to these polymorphonuclear leukocytes as neutrophils. And you can see why. Now these neutrophils are gonna do something really cool when they get there. They have this phagocytic activity, or in other words, this process called phagocytosis, which is cellular eating, and they're gonna engulf some of these foreign bacteria. Can you imagine this little bacteria in this big phagocyte coming around like, ah, get in my belly, I'm gonna eat you and it engulfs it. Also, they can release chemicals that are antimicrobial in nature that harm the bacteria and start to inhibit its ability to invade the tissues even further. Now, don't think the bacteria are gonna be okay with this. They're also going to release chemicals and things like toxins that are harmful to the tissues, harmful to the white blood cells. Even some cases when the white blood cells engulf them, the bacteria can release chemicals inside that cause the white blood cells to spew open. And then those harmful chemicals can hurt your healthy tissues in the area and you're just like, huh? But really, you're not that aware of this exact battle going on. You're more like, why am I red? And why does this hurt? And why am I forming this little bubble or pocket that looks like it might erupt? Obviously, as you could tell, we could really geek out about the details of this war zone between the bacteria and the white blood cells and all the chemicals released. But 
I think we just need to mention two more things before we show you the drainage. One being pretty important is what is pus made out of? Pus is essentially, as you could tell from our little war zone, dead bacteria, some live bacteria, also some dead white blood cells and some live white blood cells and all the chemicals that they have released upon each other. Now, that's also why we would culture them sometimes in the lab. We'll take a swab of it and analyze it and we can see if it's staph or some other bacteria. So there's some usefulness to analyzing pus. But also there's a protein found in there called fibrin. And this fibrin is important for how abscesses form because abscesses tend to get contained in this fibrous capsule. And because of this interaction between the bacteria and the white blood cells, this fibrinogen gets converted to fibrin and forms this capsule around the pus. Now, that can be pro versus con depending on your perspective, right? From the perspective of the bacteria, that's great in a way because it encapsulates it and probably hinders other white blood cells coming from other regions of the body or the bloodstream and getting in and creating more of an attack on the bacteria. But from the perspective of our body, it encapsulates it and hinders the bacteria from spreading to other areas. And the job of the body most of the time is like, okay, we're gonna contain it in this pus capsule, that's a technical term, and sometimes it'll erupt on its own, which is great. But other times you get to come to me and we cut it open and drain it out. So I think we should probably do that. So you should be a little bit numb, but if you feel that you might feel a little bit of a prick, okay? okay. So here we go. You feel that? Nope. I guess the light gel did its job. Yep. There's a lot of pus in there. Oh yeah, it's a grand life culture here. How bad does that hurt? It hurts kind of up, up my ear a little bit. Yeah. So some of you probably loved that and couldn't get enough of it. And like we established at the beginning of the video, you're probably those that are popping zits on everyone else. The rest of you are probably like, oh, I shouldn't look, but I can't not look. And yeah, you can kind of fall into either one of those two categories. But let us know in the comments below what you think or what category you fall into. A couple of things I want to mention that you didn't see in the video. One is I ended up using an 11 blade to make a larger incision that you didn't see kind of halfway through that video. Another thing is, is we tend to irrigate afterwards. So after the pus was expressed, we used normal saline and flushed the whole pocket out to make sure we cleaned it and to reduce the risks of kind of reformation of that abscess. Also, some people will pack an abscess with like gauze or this, what we call just essentially packing. And I do that depending on the location and the size of the abscess. So if the abscess does get packed, then the patient will come back for a few days afterwards and get repacked until we feel like there's enough healing going on that the abscess isn't going to form again. Because the important part about this is, is you don't want the incision that you made to seal up and to keep the pocket underneath. You want it to heal from the bottom up to reduce the odds of reformation of that abscess. And the last thing, what about antibiotics? Do you need them? Well, it depends. If it's just an abscess and you don't have the secondary cellulitis, which is essentially kind of this disseminated surrounding skin infection that affects mostly the subcutaneous tissue, which you can see right here is the yellowy tissue on the cadaver. If you don't have that, you can tend to just go with the drainage and the body will tend to heal okay on its own. But if you have the abscess with the surrounding cellulitis, you'll typically get some antibiotics. And if I think I'm going to be giving a patient antibiotic, often during the drainage of the abscess, I'll take a sample, essentially what looks like a long cotton swab, and get a culture essentially, which is a pus sample, stick it in my little tube and put the lid on and I send it to the lab and they'll test it to see what type of bacteria specifically. And they'll also do something important called susceptibility testing, meaning they'll test antibiotics against that bacteria to make sure what type of antibiotics will kill it. And we usually start the patient on the antibiotics and if we get a note from the lab that says, hey, this bacteria is resistant to the antibiotic the patient's on, then obviously we'll call the patient and switch them to something that will actually kill this thing. As always, thanks for watching everyone. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell, blow up our comment section below. It really helps to support our channel. 
And until next time, stay safe out there and try not to form any abscesses.